Hey guys, myself Ritin Ajas, a student of Sri Venkateswara College of Engineering, here to present a report on DDCO and the topic is Network Jammer. First, let us see about the introduction. In our modern interconnected world, wireless communication has become ubiquitous, powering everything from smartphones to critical infrastructure systems. However, this dependence on wireless networks also makes them vulnerable to disruption. One such method of disruption is through the use of Network Jammer. A network jammer, also known as signal jammer or electronic countermeasure device, is a tool designed to interface with wireless signals, rendering them ineffective with a certain area. These devices operate by emitting radio frequency signals across the same frequency bands used by the targeted wireless communication systems, effectively drowning out or overpowering legitimate signals. The use of network jammers can have significant implications across various domains, from military operations and law enforcement to everyday civilian activities. In military context, jammers can be unemployed to disrupt enemy communication systems and radar operations, hindering their ability to contribute attacks or gather intelligence. Similarly, in law enforcement scenarios, jammers may be utilized to prevent remote detonation of explosion devices or the thwart unauthorized communication within secure area. Despite the potential utility in certain applications, the use of network jammers raises ethical and Legal concerns, particularly when um, employed by unauthorized individuals or entities, jamming wireless signals indiscriminately can disrupt essential services, compromises public safety, and violate regulations governing the use of radio frequency spectrum. This introduction sets the stage for a deeper exploration into the mechanism, impacts, and countermeasure associated with network jammer. By understanding the capabilities and limitations of these devices, as well as the strategies for mitigating their effects, we can better navigate the complex landscape of wireless communication security. In, in, in increasing interconnected world. Thank you. Hello everyone, myself Pawan Kumarim. Now I'm here to give a presentation on abstract for the network jammers. Network jammers are also known as the signal jammers or electronic countermeasures. Are devices designed to disrupt wireless communications by emitting radio, radio frequency signals in the same frequency range or as the targeted network. This abstract delves into the mechanisms employed by network jammers. Their potential impacts on various communication systems and strategies are multi-guiding their effects. Network jammers operate by transmitting interfering signals that overpower of drawn out leg legitimate signals with their vicinity. They can target a wide range of wireless technologies including Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cell cellular networks and GPS systems. The disruption caused by network jammers can lead to significant consequences such as loss of connectivity, compromised security and interference with crucial uh, critical communication infrastructure. The impacts of network jamming extend across diverse domains including military operations, law enforcement activities and civilian communication networks. In military context, jammers can be developed to disrupt enemy communications and radar systems impeding their ability to coordinate and execute strategic measures. Similarly, in law enforcement scenarios, jammers may be utilized to neutralize remote denotation devices or prevent authorized communication within restricted areas. However, the malicious use of network jammers by adversaries poses as a serious threat to public safety and national security. To mitigate the adverse effects of network jamming, various countermeasures have been developed. This include frequency hoping techniques, spread spectrum modulation or and signal encryption and enhance to enhance the realizations of communication system against jamming attacks. Additionally, advanced signal processing algorithms and anomaly detection methods can be employed to identify and mitigate jamming incidents in real time. The, in conclusion, network jammers represent a potent tool for disrupted wireless communications with implement, implementations ranging from military operations to civil infrastructure. Hello everyone, myself Raju v with USN1VE22 CS 122. Today we are discussing about the topic components used to network jammers. Components. Register 1 is used to emitter loading. Register 2 is used to base biasing. 
capacitor 1 is used to frequency generation capacitor 2 is used to feedback capacitor 3 is also used to feedback capacitor 4 is used to noise reduction uh, capacitor 5 is used to coupling capacitor 6 is used used to coupling capacitor 7 is used to decoupling transistor q1 is used to amplification uh, indicator l1 is used to frequency generation this is a circuit diagram of cell phone jammer circuit hi i am niranjan kn having us in 1ve 22 cs 104 now i am going to explain the topic called working procedure of network jammer and frequency calculation of network jammer so the first thing is working procedure of network jammer Firstly, the RF amplifier circuit compromises the transistor Q1, capacitor C4, C5, and the resistor R1. This RF circuit amplifies the signal generated by the tuner circuit. The amplified signal is given to the antenna through capacitor C6. It blocks DC and allows only the AC component of the signal to be transmitted. When the transistor Q1 is turned on, the turn tuner circuit at the collector turns on. The tuner circuit consists of capacitor C1 and inductor L1. This acts as an oscillator with zero resistance. It produces very high frequency with minimum damping. When the circuit is on, voltage is stored in the capacitor. Once the capacitor is completely charged, it allows charge to flow through the inductor. When the current flows through the inductor, it stores magnetic energy corresponding to the voltage across the capacitor. At a certain point, the inductor reaches its maximum and the charge or voltage across the capacitor turns to be zero. Now the magnetic charge through the inductor decreases and the current charges the capacitor in opposite or reverse polarity. The process repeats and after a while, the inductor charges the capacitor and becomes zero. This process runs until the internal resistance is generated and the oscillation stops. The RF amplifier feed is given through the capacitor C5 to the collector terminal before C6. The capacitor C2 and C3 generate pulses in random fusion, which is also called noise, at the frequency generated by the tuner circuit. The RF amplifier boosts the frequency generated by the tuner circuit. The frequency generated by the tuner circuit and the noise signal generated by the capacitors C2 and C3 is combined and amplified and even transmitted. So the next topic is frequency jamming calculation. Mobile phones operate a different frequency bands in different countries. For Canada, the 1900 MHz band is primary band particularly for the urban areas. And 850 MHz is used as backup in rural areas. The USA uses 850 and 1900 MHz band, depending upon the area. The Europeans tend to use the GSM of 900 and 1800 bands as standard. Middle East, Africa, Asia, and Oceania also use these frequency bands. In Russia and some other countries, local carriers have license for 450 MHz frequency to provide CDMA coverage. The use of different frequencies make it difficult to have a jammer for all frequencies. However, the below mentioned formula can be used to calculate the required frequencies values. So, Frequency is equals to 1 divided by 2 into pi into square root of L1 into C1. Depending on the frequencies you need to block, the values of inductor L1 and the capacitor, that is C1, can be altered. 
For example, if mobile phones in your area work at 450 megahertz, you need to generate 450 megahertz with some noise to act as blocking signal. Now, the cell phone receiver will not able to be understand which signal is to receive. We have successfully blocked cell phone signals. Here, 450 megahertz is tuning frequency. Cell phone jammers for other frequency ranges are designed similarly. However, the signal range is very weak, thus these circuits works only for range of 100 meter. Thank you. Hello, myself Manish Goda. My version is 1V22CS089 and today I will going to explain the benefits and drawbacks for the network jamma and enhance privacy. By blocking the cell phone signal, uh, signals, signal jammers ensure that your private con conversation and information remains secure for unauthorized access and they reduces the risk and encraves uh, curves the dropping and uh, protect the sensitive data. Okay, and the next one is prevention of terrorism and criminal activities. The law enforces the uh, agencies and military personnel uh, primarily use the signal jammers to prevent the terrorist activities by distributing the communication among the potential threats, halt cell, halt cell phone uh, triggers explosive device and uh, neutralize the remote controlled drones used for the uh, malicious purposes and reduce distraction in restricted areas. And the signal jammers maintain a quiet environment by preventing a mobile phones from the ringing or vibrating. Okay, the next one is in the pre in the places like the trade uh, theaters, libraries, and the exam hall. They maintain they minimize the dis dis disruptions caused by the cell phones or notification and the security enhancement in prison and detention centers. The jammers prevent the intimates. Uh, from using uh, smuggled cell phones to coordinate the illegal activities or uh, escape plans. Okay, the next one. The they enhance the security by ensuring that unauthorized communication within the prison walls is impossible, and the protecting uh, protection against the unauthorized surveillance is the signal jammers hide uh, unauthorized tracking or surveillance through mobile devices. They Safeguard uh, privacy, privacy by preventing the location tracking and unauthorized data collection. And the next one is drawbacks. The drawbacks are the security risk. The jammers can em uh, employed by criminals to disable the security systems, surveillance camera, surveillance camera or alarm systems. This misuse makes them a tool for Bulgarians or the break in hands or escape escape for first and their ability to disturb uh, legitimate communication can lead the economic impact especially for the businessmen uh, that rely on the wireless communication wireless communication legally and ethical concerns or uh, legality the most countries restrict the regulated or uh, outright prohibited the user use of the jammers due to their uh, potential harm Okay, in the United States, the FCC, Federal Communication Commission, classifies the jammers as illegal device. And the emergency service, jamming wireless network, especially during the emergency, can have life-threatening concerns, privacy. In a jam, jammer that invades the uh, individual privacy by blocking signals from the mobile devices or drones, which is breach of the law in many Jurisdiction, jurisdictions. Okay, the next one, the third one is disruptions of normal communication in jamas can cause network congestions by folding the target network within the access uh, ex uh, exclusive signal, leading to poor connect connectivity. The noise generation caused by the jammer disturb disturb signal clarity making them indecipherable uh, and the fourth one is misuse and united uh, consequences while the jammers have uh, legitimated application and the maintain exam uh, 
integrity or the enhanced vision security they misuse the process risk okay the next one is an uni unintended co colorated damage uh, jam jamming can uh, in adventurally affect nearby networks uh, impacting innocent users and the ethical uh, deal amers balancing the the need of privacy and security within potential misuse of jammers remains the unchanged okay thank you for reading it the next is going to explain applications is going to explain my my friend hi guys this is pravin p and i'm talking about the future scope as my us number is 1ve22cs117 advanced signal processing and machine learning techniques the future of networks jammers lies in the integration of advanced signal processing algorithms and machine learning techniques to enhance their effectiveness and adaptability by an analyzing patterns in wireless signals and dynamically adjusting jamming parameters future jammers can become more efficient at disrupt, disrupt, disrupting targeted communication while minimizing collateral damage the co cognitive radio technology like uh, cognitive radio technology enables network network jammers to intelligently sense and exploit unused or unutilized portions of the radio frequency spectrum maximizing their jamming capabilities while mitigating inf inference with authorized communication systems future networks jammers many leverage cognitive radio capabilities to optimize spectrum utilization adapt to dynamic and environmental conditions software def defined network dsdn and network function virtualization nfv uh, the adapt adoption of software defined networking sdn and uh, network functional functional virtualization nfv enables the virtualization of network jammers allowing for Flexible, flexible deployment and capability uh, scal scalability across diverse network architectures. Future network jammers may leverage SDN and NFV to deliver on-demand jamming capabilities and seamlessly integrate with existing communication infrastructures. Jamming resilient communication protocols as wireless communication protocols evolve to incorporate robust robust security features and adaptive modulation techniques networking jammers must likewise evolve to overcome these differences future network jammers may focus on developing con countermeasures against emerging communication protocols leveraging novel jamming techniques to maintain their effectiveness in disrupting modern wireless networks quantum resistance cryptography with the advent of for quantum computing traditional cryptographic algorithms used to secure wireless communications may become vulnerable to attacks future networks jammers may explore quantum resist resistant cryptography techniques to disrupt encrypted communication channels posing new cha new challenges new challenges for securing wireless networks against jamming attacks dynamic spectrum access and spectrum sharing the proliferation of dynamic spectrum access and spectrum sharing technologies and enables more efficient utilization of the radio frequency spectrum presenting both opportunities and challenges for network jammers future jammers may adapt to dynamically changing spectrum availability and prioritize jamming efforts based on real time spectrum usage patterns to maximize their impact cyber physical integration and hybrid warfare as modern conflicts increasingly blur the line between the physical and cyber domains future networking jammers may integrate with cyber warfare cyber warfare capabilities to orchestrate hybrid attack against adversary communication systems this holistic approach to electronic war warfare emphasizes the importance of synergy synergizing jamming operations with cyber tactics to act to achieve strategic uh, 
objectives ethical and regulatory con consideration as the capabilities of network jammers continue to evolve addressing ethical and regulatory considerations surroundings their use surrounding their use becomes paramount future research may focus on developing frameworks for enabling enabling uh, for a responsible deployment of network jammers ensuring compliance with international laws and ethical guidance governing electronic warfare operations in conclusion uh, by embracing interdisciplinary is explained by my friend thank you